Modern Christians, this is another video for you because I am really trying to help steer you away from the wide path to destruction that you have decided to embark upon following the corrupted churches. Because 17 centuries ago, evil men using the cover of the Catholic Church infiltrated Christianity. These were the Antichrists. You could also see them as the devil's minions, if you like. But basically, they used the Council of Nicaea to remove God the Father as the Godhead and replace him with the Son. And then they took authority over the scriptures and they began to enforce the worship of the Son instead of the worshipping of God the Father. Even though... Jesus tells us that we are to emulate him and Jesus worshipped God the Father. Because if we look at John 12, 49, John 11, 41 to 42, Luke 6, 12, Matthew 6, 6, 2 John 1, 9 to 11, who did Jesus pray to and worship? Was it himself or God the Father? No, Jesus didn't pray to himself. Jesus didn't worship himself. Jesus was praying to and worshipping God the Father. And in Mark sixteen fifteen, what did Jesus tell his followers to do? He told them to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So what was the gospel? What was the gospel that Jesus was preaching? Was he preaching about himself or was he preaching about God the Father? Because if we look in Mark 1 14, it says that Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And in Luke 4.43, Jesus said that it was his purpose to preach the gospel of God the Father. And that is what God the Father had sent him to do. And then after he had tra trained his disciples in Luke 9.2, Jesus tells us he sent them out to preach about... God the Father. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and in Matthew 6.33 he told all of his followers to seek first the kingdom of God. So he trained all of his apostles to go and preach about God the Father and what does Christ's apostle Peter say in Peter 1.3-12? Peter says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter is preaching the gospel of God, the Father, doing what Jesus instructed. And we can see that in Peter 1, 3 to 12, he is saying, all praise goes to God, the Father. So my question to you guys you who are claiming to be followers of Jesus but are not actually following Jesus, you know, Christ's commandments, why aren't you following Christ's commandments? Because clearly Peter is emulating Christ and Christ worships God the Father Christ instructs his apostles to go out and preach about God the Father and bring people to God the Father. Then we see Peter actually does go out and say all praise to God the Father. But then you're actually going out and bringing people to the Son. You're encouraging people to praise and worship the Son. But I can't actually see where Jesus actually tells us to worship him. 
to go around worshipping and praising him, to go around bringing people to the Son. Jesus is telling us to bring people to the Father. Jesus told his apostles to bring people to the Father, and that's exactly what Peter did when he said all praise goes to God the Father. And then in Matthew 27, 46, Jesus asks, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is showing that the kingdom of God was with his father. That's why he's praying to his father, not him. Not him. And this is a f confirmed again in Matthew 23, 9, when he says, don't call anybody on earth father because you have one father and he is in heaven. So again, I don't understand why Christians today are not following the commandments of Jesus and are not emulating Jesus and the apostles of Jesus in worshipping the Father, in bringing people to the Father and telling people that all praise and worship goes to the Father. So, to explain it a little more simply for those who don't understand how the Spirit of God the Father is also a Spirit that unites him to the Son. And this is why Jesus says, when you see me, you see the Father and I and the Father are one. So a lot of misled Christians often give me these very same verses. In fact, they always just give me the same verses over and over again. And most of the verses come from John. And this is where they will tell me that this is what proves that Jesus is God because they want to completely ignore all of the other times that Jesus said he wasn't God, that Jesus told us to only worship God the Father, that Jesus told us to emulate him and Jesus was worshipping God the Father because they don't actually understand that Jesus is talking about the divine spirit that unites him to the Father because he is the first extension of God the Father manifest in the flesh. Now it doesn't mean that he's God the Father. It just means that he is the first extension of God the Father and that is why he is a divine man as opposed to a mortal man. Now, I would like to ask Christians that are worshipping Jesus as God the Father, do you know the difference between a divine man and a mortal man? Because if you don't, then this is the way that the clergy have fooled you into believing that you are doing the right thing when you are praising the Son. Because you don't understand that even though Jesus is a divine man, he is still a man. He is still human. He is not God. He is of God. He is a divine extension of God, but he is not God. He is not equal to God and he is a man. So I thought that I would try and find an analogy that may help to explain this a little more easily and clearly. So if we look at God the Father as so God the Father were the body, okay, and Jesus his son was his right arm. And I wanted to use this analogy because in John 12, 38, Jesus is called the arm of the Lord. And then that verse from John also refers to the prophecy of Isaiah, where he equates the divine children of God to God's holy arm. So if we can imagine that God is the body and Jesus is the right arm of God, would you actually worship the arm or the body because what you're doing is by worshiping Jesus over God the Father you're worshiping the arm instead of the body so if we look at it this way 
if you actually were to worship the body, then you would be worshipping the arm as well. So if you were to worship God, then you are worshipping Jesus automatically. If you're worshipping the body, then you're automatically worshipping the right arm too, aren't you? But if you're just worshipping the right arm, then you're ignoring the body. Do you see this is what's happening when you're worshipping the Son instead of worshipping God the Father? You can still worship the Son, but you have to give all praise and worship first to God the Father, and you don't do that. All you do is worship and idolize the Son, and that is why you are blaspheming the Father. Because even if you have a look at John 14, 1, Jesus separates himself from God when he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. See how he puts God the Father first? And then he says, believe also in me. So it's not to say that you can't honor and respect and worship the Son, but you have to do it in order of creation. And so it's all praise goes to the Father first, and then you worship the Son as his created divine Son. What you are all doing is worshipping the Son and then God the Father is an afterthought and that's even if you now actually separate God the Father from Jesus the Son because I have seen a lot of you say to me that Jesus is fully God and fully man and Jesus is God the Father. This is how confused you have become. And Trinitarians, whatever that means, you are really misled. You are one of the most confused in all of modern Christianity because you are saying that God is three people and that is what makes Jesus God. But again, that's like saying the arm is the body. Just because God is everything doesn't mean everything is God. Just because the Word was with God in the beginning and Jesus is the Word of God on the physical plane doesn't make Jesus God the Father. It just makes Jesus the rep representative of his Father on the earthly plane in his earthly kingdom and he speaks for the Father because he is the direct divine extension of the Father. And this is why it's a good way to see that Jesus is the arm of God the Father because as I said, we can even see this in John 12, 38. So it may help you to visualize how Jesus is still very important and we revere Jesus and we honor Jesus and we respect Jesus and we believe in Jesus but all praise goes to the Father first because he is the body and Jesus is the extension of God. Just like the arm is the extension of the body, but the arm isn't the body. It's still part of the body. And if you were to speak to the arm or the arm were to speak to you, the arm could say to you, if you've seen me, you've seen the body, but it doesn't make the arm the body. The arm could say to you, I and the body are one, but it doesn't make the arm the body. So I really hope that this analogy has helped clarify it because as I said, guys, you are being fooled into walking the wide path. I'm not here to be your enemy. I'm trying to help you. Um, you know, we see that in Numbers 23, 19, it states that God is not a man, okay, or a human. And in God, in John 4, 23, 24, it tells us that God is spirit. Again, okay, confirming that Jesus is not God the Father. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. And I really do hope you consider what I've said to you today. And um, as always, peace out.